ऑटो अरे ऑटो भाई अरे यार ऑटो भाई ऑटो यार ऑटो थैंक यू थैंक यू बट आप चलेंगे क्या ओके चलो It seems the smaller the car the bigger the controversy. This is the Bajaj Cute and it's been a long long time coming. But one sec. Is this even a car to begin with? Yes, the Cute has four wheels but a car it isn't. This is a vital point to understand because the Cute is not governed by the same regulations as the cars you and I are familiar with. What the Cute actually is is India's first quadricycle. Think midway point between a three-wheeler and a traditional car and you'll be close. Time to take a closer look. First and foremost, let's talk size. The dinky size Cute is all of 2.7 meters long, 1.3 meters wide and 1.6 meters tall. So it's well within the quadricycle dimension restrictions. The tiny footprint means the Cute occupies 30% less road space than a Maruti Alto. The Bajaj is not a looker but it is cute in its own way. The high roof, narrow body and small 12 inch wheels give it a gawky stance and form follows function here. Like a Tata Nano, the cute is rear engine so here too the bonnet opens to reveal a small storage bay that is good to hold a few small bags. The cute looks almost comical in profile but Bajaj sure has tried to uplift the look with a mild crease at the shoulder line and prominent slash lower down on the doors. At the rear a plastic surround lines the windscreen but note there's no provision for an openable tailgate access to the engine is via a lockable flap lower down on the bumper the cute is built around a monocoque structure that uses rigid and lightweight high strength steel the petrol cute weighs in at 452 kg while the cng cute tips the scale at 504 kg the outer panels are plastic and bajaj says it has ensured parts are easily repairable to keep replacement cost to a minimum Let's shift focus to what it's like on the inside. So in the cute what you see is what you get. One steering, three pedals, one gear lever, a speedometer that reads to 100 although it'll never cross 70 and uh, creature comforts include these sliding windows. Storage comes by way of these two lockable shelves and there's also your spare tire right here. There is the option of equipping the cute with an audio system but notice the absence of vents on the dashboard well the cute doesn't have a ventilation system on a hot day there's just no escaping the heat and at the back getting into the back seat of the cute isn't as convenient as getting into your average auto rickshaw but you will always take the option of the doors when the weather is bad On the inside space is actually pretty decent. Uh I'm almost 6 feet tall and there's enough room for me. Uh it's still really bare bones in here. Do not expect much by way of creature comforts. The only real good thing is that there are at least static real seat belts so there's some basic safety in the back. What's a shame is that none of the seats come with head restraints exposing occupants to the risk of whiplash injury in the event of a collision. Talking practicality, there's a reasonable amount of storage space on offer. In addition to the shelves on the dash and the frunk, the cute gets fair-sized front door pockets. You can slide in a slender laptop bag behind the rear seats, and should you need more space, you can also fold the split rear seat backrests. Petrol versions also get some storage under the front seats, though the space is occupied by a 35-liter tank in CNG models. <laughs> Both wheel means the cute's dynamics are completely different to an auto rickshaw. Bajaj's Chuck and Test Track has a fairly straightforward layout, but I can't say I didn't have my reservations. And here comes a corner. Not bad, not bad at all. A good show, but time to take things up a level. Now regular corner is something but what about an emergency maneuver 
Bajaj knew that that would be a concern for us, so they have set up a slalom course. The Qt has an anti-roll bar up front. I hope it does its job. It's passed that test. The good thing is that it did not feel like it would tip over and I was doing about 50 kilometers an hour. The cute held its grounds in other maneuvers as well, but there was still that question mark on braking performance. Sure, the fourth wheel should bring in the necessary stability, but the cute is really basic otherwise. No ABS, no disc brakes, drums all around. Here goes at 50 kph. It stopped. And a word in on ride quality. I foresee people spending a lot of time in the cute. This is an intra-city vehicle, so it makes sense to talk about ride quality. Unfortunately, Bajaj's Chakan test track is very smooth, but even the few lumps and bumps, you can feel them. But it's not as hard on your spine as is an auto rickshaw, so that is good news indeed. Of the other things is refinement. What you have to keep in mind is that this is bare bones transportation. There are no frills like carpets or sound deadening material as such. There's one engine in the back, it's fairly simple and it's really loud. So you will have to talk over the engines, grumble as such, to make conversation with fellow passengers. Finally, let's get down to performance. The Qt comes powered by a 216cc single-cylinder liquid-cooled and twin-spark engine that drives the rear wheels. The engine is mated to a 5-speed sequential gearbox. Push up for an upshift, pull down for a downshift. In petrol form, the engine makes 13.2 HP and 18.9 Nm, while the figures drop to 11 HP and 16.1 Nm for the CNG version with us today. So, how does it perform? The Qt is not lightning fast, it was never meant to be, but the gearing is short, so you get to about 30 km an hour, which is uh, an average city speed, rather quickly. Initial acceleration is half decent, so you won't be left behind in typical start-stop traffic. But the Qt lacks space on open city roads. Our V-Box test gear gave us a 0 to 60 kps time of 26.9 seconds, making the Qt the slowest car or should we say four-wheeler we've ever tested. That being said, the Qt was never about acceleration times at all. As Bajaj Auto executives tell us, low running costs is the name of the game in commercial vehicles. Bajaj claims the Qt CNG can deliver 45 km per kg of CNG, while the Qt petrol can stretch each litre for 35 km. But only a full test will give us the complete picture. So what's the big takeaway? Till such time the Qt becomes available for private use, the best way to experience it would be to summon one as a cab. It's a step up from the ubiquitous auto rickshaw alright, but could it just be an option for budget car buyers as well? No doubt, the Qt offers immense savings in running costs, but when you factor in the estimated 2.6 lakh rupee price, which is about 1 lakh rupees more than its 3 wheeled sibling, it makes the similarly priced Tata Nano look like great value. Quite frankly, the Qt is too much of a compromise to be considered a personal car. There's also the question mark on safety. Sure, Bajaj will market it as an intra-city vehicle and we believe in a low-speed environment it doesn't require car-like standards of crashworthiness. But in the absence of specific regulations that ban quadricycles on highways and expressways, there's little to stop buyers from using it as a car. Look at it as not more than an auto rickshaw with a fourth wheel and the Cute makes a much better case for itself. And a much safer one at that.